Yeah. So I'm all about empowering uh, entrepreneurs, but especially mums, how to do this because, and, and especially women, because I think um, women have a particular mindset about caring for their family and it's really hard to switch off from that and then be an entrepreneur. And the rea- reality is I am both. I am a mum and I am an entrepreneur as well. Like as we're recording this, I've got my kid being looked after <laughs> by a babysitter <laughs> and another one's down mm. the beach doing something with his grandparents. And like, so yeah, life moves on and we are busy. So it's really about setting up yourself or your family or your business um, to achieve passive income. So income. A kangaroo fern production. Welcome Welcome to Gorilla Podcast, Fresh Eyes. The beat that makes you feel good. A weekly podcast that features interviews with social change leaders or individuals that aims to bring audiences good stories to motivate their own social impact efforts. Now, here's your host. Good day, Herminista. This is Welcome to Gorilla Podcast, Fresh Eyes. For this episode, we'll be discussing about digital marketing and social media for your business. So our guest for today is... She is a super mom. That's right. To her two kids, an MBA degree in marketing and IT to her belt and started a call center consulting business in 2004. Work for some Australian leading blue chips firm as a strategic marketing consultant. And in 2012, her fitness business had hit over 100K in profit for the first year. That's right. Please welcome... Is that how you spell Daniela? Danielle Arkett. Arkett. Yeah, That's Danielle it. Danielle Arkett of uh, Social Media Super Mom. Thanks so much. How are you today? I'm Welcome really to good. Show. Oh, thanks so much. And thanks so much for your um, awesome blurb there. It makes me sound amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, it's really nice to, to hear that. And it's always great to reflect on what we have actually done and achieved. So, yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. So, let's talk about yourself first. Okay. On your early days... Are you already thinking on your mind that you're going to be built a three successful business? Uh, Actually, no. I didn't think that business was going to be what I got into. So my, I was one of those students at high school that did okay in most subjects. Mm -hmm. And when my parents said to me, what are you going to study at university? Because it was kind of an expectation (laughs) from them. I said, well, um, there's, I opened the handbook and I looked through all the subjects and really the only subjects I liked was English was mm. the first uh, languages. So I loved French and Italian and um, theatre studies and drama. So that's what I ended up studying was a Bachelor of Arts. And in my second year, I transferred to a languages degree okay. and studied French. <laughs> so people think from there, well, okay, how did you get from being a languages graduate mm-hmm. to then business? So I graduated and I couldn't be employed as a languages graduate because I didn't want to be a translator. I did Mm -hmm. study overseas and travel, which was awesome experience, but I came back to Australia and I had no real concrete skills that made me employable. Uh, As we like to say back then, if you were an arts graduate uh, in that era, you were basically unemployable. (laughs) So... um, I was, um, I actually moved to Newcastle and I got a job there in a call center uh, on the phone selling health insurance. So that was my first job. And I soon realized that I had a real knack for customer resolution and for helping customers. And I loved that. And also for numbers as in analytics. So that's how I started my customer journey. And what I realized is the power of the customer and how important they are. Um, so from there, I was really lucky to have different, um, you know, experiences. I worked in the analytics team. I worked in the performance team. I worked in the recruitment team and eventually got headhunted for, um, the Sydney Olympics, um, call center to, to recruit. Yeah. So I started recruiting for all of the Sydney Olympics call centers and then also for the docs kids helpline and a bunch of other projects, um, and started my career in recruitment of all things. And the thing I loved about recruitment was the people. So you get to meet new people, find out about their skill sets, what they're good at, what they're not so good at. Um, And from there, I decided that I was really getting to the top of the tree of what I could be doing. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to university and study business because now I'd been working in business for a while. I could see the gaps of what I didn't have 
And hence, I went and did my MBA in marketing and IT because I was very interested in analytics. At that stage, I was working as a business analyst. So, yeah, it's been a crazy ride <laughs> from one thing to another. Um, and while working as an analyst, so I sort of worked my way up the chain with that and ended up at Comsec working as one of their stockbroking analysts. So a big stretch from analyst to digital marketing. Um, however, looking back, I think I always had the two skill sets that digital marketing really needs. The first thing was really understanding the customer journey and I learned that very early in my career, my first job and the first few jobs I had working in call centers, you have to understand that customer innately. And that's so important in marketing. And the second thing was the analytics, understanding the numbers, being able to run the numbers, being able to understand the metrics of how a campaign's performing or how is your Facebook ad going or what is your profit and loss? <laughs> All of those metrics um, also were really helpful. So I ended up with financials and then the marketing, understanding the customer journey, and then on the other side, the IT of actually being able to build out systems. So big stretch, but <laughs> from one to the other. So I think skills are definitely transferable in your life. So what is, digi digital, mar what is digital marketing? So for people who is not known about, yeah, sure. what is the layman term of digital marketing? Right. Especially for some of the business today. So mm -hmm. some business owner doesn't, if they say digital marketing, they're very afraid to, what is that? Yeah, exactly. How, how is this going to be helped? Yeah, so when it comes to marketing, we know that marketing generally as a term means putting our business name out there and then getting customers. So ultimately, marketing is a tool to generate leads to your business. The only difference between digital marketing or as we also call it, online marketing, so you could be called it digital marketing or online marketing, is that we are doing that process online so with web systems with your website with social media with other um, sales funnels and other tools that we use so there's really no difference yeah the key thing is in digital marketing and the different the main difference i see is that you can really measure the results a lot more effectively yeah when you're doing um return on investment for things like a signpost let's say on the highway it's really hard to know exactly how many people <laughs> drove past the signpost looked at the signpost, responded to the signpost. So yeah, digital marketing is a little bit different because we can more effectively see the measurement, the return on investment from what people are spending on their marketing. So you're saying social media. So it, w what do you think is the power of social media right now to say, I got a, a business? Well, I think the first thing you need to know about social media is it's a little bit like having a website or a business card. So uh, we all need to carry a business card round to give to someone because if we run into someone and they're interested in what it is that we do, we wanna give them that business card so they can respond to that, give us a call, send us an email, or go to our website. It's the same with the website, yep. So people, we have a website so that if people hear about us, they can go visit our website and learn a bit more about what we do. I would argue that social media is actually now at that step. If, you're, if you don't have a social media presence, on your ideal platforms, then it's a little bit like not having a website or not mm -hmm. having a business card, yeah? It's just one other place where people are gonna go and look for you and search for you. And it is proven and people now know that people would rather go and search on their favorite platform like Facebook, for example, to look for a business than to even go to the website directly, for example. So yeah, it's definitely something that is needed and you have to have, yeah? I, I guess the next question would then become like, which platforms do I need? I'm just gonna ask that. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. So on? there's a Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and now yeah. the TikTok. Yeah. Right. So right. WeChat. There's all kinds WeChat, of different. Yeah. Yeah. There's all kinds of different um, platforms that you can use for your social media presence. Yep. In Australia, the key ones that people are using is obviously LinkedIn for more of a commercial or a business environment. So if you're doing any business to business sales, then you have to be on LinkedIn. Yep. There is Facebook. Everyone knows Facebook. There is a bit of a myth out there with Facebook that it's only for business to consumer type products. That's not true. There's a lot of business to business interactions that do go on on Facebook. 
also just an interesting statistic. Around 30% of CEOs of businesses in Australia are on Facebook. So when people say to me, oh, my ideal consumer or, you know, my business person is not on Facebook, that's actually a myth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next is Instagram. Instagram started with a much younger audience. Yeah. But the reality is Instagram is growing and exploding. Instagram is a very aesthetic platform though. So some products are not necessarily suited to Instagram. And that if, but if you have any kind of aesthetic product, then it's definitely going to be on there. Also, if you don't have an aesthetic product, but your product suits um, the millennial environment, I would highly encourage you to get on Instagram and to figure out how to make your branding aesthetic. Like, for example, I don't sell an aesthetic product. My products mm -hmm. are online marketing <laughs> and consulting services, but I figured out how to make an aesthetic look to my product, an aesthetic feel, and how to add value on Instagram so that my millennial um, environment and millennial customers will follow me. Yeah. So you're saying before it's about sales funnels yes. on, on a business. Yes. W what is that? Okay, great. That's a really great question. So when someone asks me, what is a sales funnel? I always get super excited. Yeah, mm. I'm quite passionate about this stuff. So let's look at it like this. When you, let's say you're building, you've got an engine. So you have a car, right? Mm. And your car is sitting in your garage. Yep. Yeah, but it's in pieces and it hasn't been built yet. Right. So you're doing up. Um, some kind of Maserati. It's in mm. you. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's in your garage and it's got little bits and pieces, all sort of, and you have to put them together in the right order. And eventually, once you do that, you can turn the ignition on and it works. Social media or other sales strategies could be Google AdWords. It could be any kind of what I call traffic strategy is really the petrol to the car, right? So if you have a great online business engine, that's working already. So that includes things like a sales page, mm -hmm. um, some kind of way to attract people into what is your sales funnel. And the funnel is just the term for let's funnel people in and get a sale out the other end. That's all it is, yeah? Um, so the sales funnel really consists of let's have some kind of um, attraction thing, th shiny, bright thing that people want that are that target market. And then let's actually, once they they go and they want to download that thing, and they enter their email address. And so now they belong to you. They're on your list because you have their email address, not Mark Zuckerberg or <laughs> any of the other Facebook people or any of the other. It's actually you now have their email address. They've given you permission for you to give them that bright, shiny thing, right? So now they go look at that bright, shiny thing and they're thinking, wow, this is amazing. This was free. Imagine what their paid stuff is like. Yeah. Mm. And that's how you hook them into your what we would say the email sequence and then at a given point we decide to take that customer journey through to a point where we're now ready to offer them our sale we're ready to offer them this is the product you want here's the sale and to get them to click and to buy ideally online but sometimes that does take offline as well for example in service-based businesses podiatrist for example or a, um, I've got a speech pathologist right now I'm working with those kind of businesses yeah. Is there any different, is there different type of sales funnels or only the website? Oh, there's heaps of different types mm -hmm. of sales funnels. So you can definitely drive people to your website. You can also drive them to a landing page. Uh, you might have heard of that or a yep. sales page they so refer fancy. to it. Yep. The reason why I would choose always a landing page or a sales page over a website is the conversion rate. Yeah. Mm. So you might have heard in the industry, so general conversion rates on websites a good conversion rate is going to be 5%. Mostly it's going to be between 1% and 3%, most of the clients I work with. So with landing pages and some of the sales pages that I've been building, the conversion rates are up between 20 to 30% on most of them. So now what that means is you're getting like three, four times, five times the customers coming through to your website. Now that won't matter too much, um, you know, when you're first starting, but when you're spending lots of money on advertising, you want to make sure you have the maximum amount of success, the maximum return on investment investment going for that ad. So once someone comes through your funnel, you really want to make sure like at every step of the journey that you're maximizing for that to customer to come through. I have worked for branding agencies and social media and, and marketing agencies in the past and I have spent client money that we had obviously for social media 
and got hundreds and hundreds of leads through to websites that didn't convert and that resulted in zero sales for them. So I would rather work on the conversion rates first, make sure that the landing page, the offer's good, people are actually coming through and giving me their email address so that I can go back to them with more stuff than to have those clients hit a dead end, um, especially when you're paying for them. I mean, that's just a waste of money. That's money down the drain. Yeah. So on this type of a strategic, so you get like more traffic? Is that organic? How, how do you get organic traffic? Is that because of this type of marketing? So, yeah, so there's two types of traffic. There's organic traffic and there's paid traffic. Um, it doesn't really matter which traffic you use at the end of the day. Um, you know, you, if you're starting out, you're not going to have the money for advertising. But if you're a little bit more established and or you want to save time, then paid traffic is a much better way to go. Uh, so it doesn't matter really which traffic you use. There's different strategies that you can employ for each. What matters is if you are sending traffic through to anyone or anywhere, it better convert. It better actually result for you. Uh, I mean, I think uh, the best illustration of this that I can give you is when I had my own personal training business. So I was a commercial personal trainer and I had a number of staff working for me. And, you know, I was having to shell out my own money, put my hand in my hip pocket as a small business owner and pay for those Facebook ads, <laughs> you know. So I pretty quickly learned what did and didn't work. I pretty quickly learned what resonated with my clientele and what didn't. And I pretty quickly learned, like, if it was a massive failure, like, not to spend money on that again. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's all about making sure that the traffic that you do get, whether it's a paid ad or whether it's organic content that you're producing to help people come through, it's got to come through to somewhere. Now, what most people do is they send it straight to their website and hope that it works. Yeah, it's a bit of a like hope, wish, luck strategy. <laughs> um, but the reality is it doesn't. So where I send them, I have a specific landing page that my clients go to. And when they hit that landing page, they get value-based content that they're able to download. Now, at that landing page, they can't do anything else. They can't go anywhere else. They can only download the content and give me their email address or they get off the page. That is their choice, right? Mm -hmm. So the conversion rate on that page is really high because most people, they really want what I'm giving them. I only advertise to my ideal clientele with that thing. So for example, if you were a, a relationships counsellor and you advertised, here's the guide to saving your marriage, no one's going to go and download that thing unless they really want their marriage saved, right? Yep. So you're going to get a bunch of people go to that site and go, okay, that was the thing I wanted and now I'm going to download it because I'm interested in this. If they're not interested in that particular topic, they're not going to go there in the first place. So you do tend to get higher conversion rates. If you were to send them to a website, here's what would happen. They go to the front page, they're like, yeah, this looks interesting. Let's learn a little bit more about this person. They go click on the About Us page. They go click on, oh, where's the products and services and here's how much it was and that look, might look too expensive. And they shop around the website for a while and then what happens? The doorbell rings or their baby's nappy needs changing <laughs> or, you know, whatever happens and now they're off and now you're stuffed. Yeah, because really the only thing they needed from you, they really needed to get that value information into their hands and to provide you their email address so that you could give that to them. Sounds Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of tips and help. So, what you are, what your advice for an online business or a new business to start yeah. up, especially if they don't know social media, they don't know digital marketing. Sure. Well, what is your help and tips to them? Yeah. So, a couple of tips. The first tip I would say is understand your product sequence. Understand which product you're going to give to your customer. Um, what do I mean by that? So you need to have products at different levels. So most people just have one product and like one price and that's not necessarily going to suit the people that are coming to, to see you. For example, if I was a commercial gym, I'm going to offer memberships. I'm going to offer maybe a VIP program for my elite level training clients. I might offer a boot camp. So different products at different price points. That's the first thing. Really understand what your products are. The second thing is then understand like what is the one thing that my clientele wants that, it, that they would go to a website for to get. Now, if people are coming in their personal training, chances are they're going to maybe want something to do with, let's say, diet. Mm -hmm. 
correct? Mm -hmm. or, or weight loss or exercises, but let's say diet. Yeah. So I'm going to give them some kind of 100 page free recipe book uh, that they can get for free downloaded, right? When they hit my website. Now, the important thing is at this point, we're just giving them stuff. It's not take, take, take. We give, 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 and then we take once that relationship is established. So it's the whole no like, trust sequence. We get to know them, they start to like us, they start to trust us, and then we go in for the kill in the sale, right? <laughs> we don't want to like... Like, what do I call it? It's like marrying someone before you date them. You just Married at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little just bit like, like that, a, married at first sight. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. So what you want to do is take a girl on a couple of dates first, get to know her. And you might eventually go, yeah, she's pretty cool. I like her. And, and you may fall in love and eventually get married. But the point of the matter is like, you know, what we're asking for. And I've seen so many, this done so badly so many times. Don't go in and ask someone to marry you when they don't even know you yet right we need to make sure that we're building that trust so the best way to do that is give them something that they want give them something that they want um, for free that's worth a lot of money to them might not be worth a lot of money to you to them personally so information give them lots and lots of information people are very scared to give a lot of information away they think oh if I give all this information away people are going to copy it or they won't need me that's a big thing they won't need me if I give them all this information they're, they're not going to need me but it's not actually the case um, at all in fact what they do is they come back to you because they go wow she or he knows a lot of stuff and I want more info from them does that make sense so the first thing look at your products know what you're offering them for free and the third thing is the technology setting that up that's where I do a lot of that work because most of my clients get very overwhelmed or frustrated by the fact that they just don't know about the tech so that's where I kind of come in and help them um, the next thing would be establish those relationships you already have. If you've already got email addresses on your list, they are worth so much money to you. You're probably just not utilizing that relationship to its maximum. So start sending them out the monthly or fortnightly newsletters. Start developing that relationship with those people because they're already a warm audience, yeah? I see so many businesses go out to market to a cold audience, someone that doesn't know them and spend money on that stuff when they've already got a list of like, 100, 200 people, yeah, that they can go and, and, you know, create contact with and send offers to. Does that make sense? So, yeah, the first thing is build the engine. The second thing is then pour the petrol in. If you're talking purely social media or so purely traffic strategies, I think the first thing you have to do is take a real look. And I mean, it's 2020 is coming up. It's a good time to do a digital audit on your business. Mm. So take a look at what your business goals are, yeah, I actually wrote a couple of notes down here. So the key things are purpose. So we're going to pat the bear. So we're going to look at what's the purpose, P for purpose. Um, what is the purpose of my social media? What do I want it to do? What, what am I trying to achieve by doing it? Really understand and get deep with that and really go, okay, cool. So my purpose is to drive traffic, yep. I see people posting all this stuff on social media but it's going nowhere because they're not really clear on what their purpose is. At the end of the day, the purpose should be to drive people to purchase something from your landing page or from your website, but ideally from the landing so page. They don't, so they don't know their target audience. Yeah, well, that's, mm. the second, that's the second point is audience. So that's the A for audience, yep. Know your target niche. And when I say know your target niche, people think they know their niche, but you really have to look at the deep level psychographic factors. Now, if you were to just look at one of those things, it would be this one question. What keeps your client up at night? Yep. What mm. is the number one thing <laughs> that keeps them up at night? What are they the most worried about? What are they fearing the most? Yeah. Once you answer that question, you'll get a bit of insight to who that person is. Yeah. And it takes some time to deep dig into who that audience is. The third thing, which is T, is tell a story. Yeah. People tend in marketing always, and this is something I experienced a lot before online, uh, they tend to focus on the features of the product. For example, uh, this highlighter over here, it's yellow. It's got black writing on it. It's really good. Um, it's a really good highlighter. It looks good. It highlights. Yeah. What's the benefit of that? So the benefit is I can highlight faster smoother and in a more organized fashion 
and it's more bright, meaning that it will last longer and you'll be able to get through your uni notes quicker and achieve that grade A on your report card. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're so busy marketing features that we forget about the benefits. Our customers don't care about features. <laughs> they don't care that it's yellow and black and all these other things. What they care about is why is that of benefit to them? You know, the whole what's in it for me? Why is that to benefit? The benefit is that they can get through their highlighting their notes faster and get a better grade. Yeah. So that's pat. The next bit is bear. So we're going to pat the bear. Bear is branding. If you go to something, Instagram's a really good platform for this. Instagram's very branded, highly branded. Guys, people aren't going to follow you on Instagram unless you have a really clean, good-looking brand aesthetic, okay? Now, it can be all black and white. It could be like mine's, um, you know, got specific colors that I use and quotes. Uh, or it could be um, photos of different people, whatever it is, but just have an aesthetic that resonates with and connects with your audience, yeah? Because people follow initially on in Instagram based on the branding they see. They'll be like, yep, yeah, love that. Oh, look at that page. That looks great. Bang, follow. And then you're going to start, then they'll start seeing your posts. Um, Branding is also important in Facebook and LinkedIn. You just want to look professional. Yeah. You wouldn't go to a first date in a track suit with no makeup on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so not if you're a girl anyway. <laughs> so um, it's the same in the online environment. You know, turn up wearing nice clothes. Yeah. If you want to make a first good first impression. Same with your branding. Yeah. Next is engage, keep it interesting. So like, you know, with videos, for example, if, um, if you have a video or if you have a post and it's boring and putting you to sleep, then it doesn't belong anywhere, quite honestly. Keep people engaged and involved in the journey. Like storytelling is not done enough in marketing and the brands that are doing it are really, really cutting through, yeah? So as I said, focus on the benefits, but focus also on what's the background story as to why you developed this product? Why did you decide you wanted to work in whatever it was you wanted to work in? And, and really focus on that and engage your audience with what you have to say. Yeah. Um, two more. <laughs> Won't be long. A is action something. Give them something to action. So there mm. should always be a call to action on the end of every post. So that call to action might be click here or it might be learn more or it might be download this thing or it might be come back next week to see what else I've got on offer or it might be do our free e-course or you know there's so many different call to action that you could have but there's nothing worse than an audience or a social media post going flat at the end because there's no CTA there's no call to action yep and then finally R is for repurpose yep Repurposing is so important, yeah, because that's what saves us time. Now, if you're on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and wherever else, um, and my advice is start with one platform first, nail that and then move on to the second platform. Um, but if you're on all of those platforms, you really need to make sure that whatever you're doing, you're able to repurpose. So for example, if we shot a video today and then we could repurpose it into a podcast and then we could get a transcription of that and that could actually go into a blog on your website, for example, and then you could do a short form blog of that long form blog and use that in your Instagram along with hashtags. So do you see what I mean? Like whatever we're doing, make sure that you're maximizing it across the channels so that you don't have to go in and do as much content because content takes a long time to produce yeah so that was my thing so um pat bear so <laughs> hopefully people remember that pat the bear pat the but bear, yeah, yeah purpose audience tell a story branding engage action and repurpose so you're saying the blogging the last one is the blogging is still effective as a marketing tools it is so um blogging is still quite important um, I think when you're thinking all kinds of traffic strategies, you're thinking long-term versus short-term, right? So the reality is that blogging is extremely important for SEO, for search engine optimization, and, and you know, it's content. It really is part of content. So it is something that needs to be done with businesses. However, most smaller businesses really want traffic now and quickly, yeah? So I think you have to have an understanding of what traffic strategies will help you straight away and what are going to help you long term. This is also going to depend on the nature of your product. For example, if you're a plumber, yep. Now, tell me, when have you, have you ever needed to call a plumber or know someone that's had to call a plumber? 
For me, not yet. Okay. <laughs> you're lucky, very, not yet. Yeah. Well, you're very lucky, yeah. yeah. But you probably got someone in your family that mm. might have had to call a plumber once before. Yeah. Now, is that an urgent issue when you have to call a plumber? Yes. Usually, it's Usually urgent, urgent, right? Yeah. So, imagine you don't know a plumber or you can't think of one off the back of your head. Sometimes you might hear one of those jingles you've heard on the radio. Like, that's great branding. Uh, what are you going to do? So, most of them and Google. Yeah, Google, right. Exactly. Google. Right Google. So, yeah. yeah. So, that's why plumbers get great results from things like Google AdWords because you're going to basically type it into Google and click the first one <laughs> because that's what, wor- that's what works in that scenario, yeah? Whereas something like um, that you don't need quite as urgently um, or something like say children's daycare yeah you're not just going to google that and click the first one because there's a little bit more of an invested decision you might ask around your friend and family networks ask for referrals or you might see some things locally and then go do interviews and find out more yeah this is where it's really important to understand your niche and then know like trust process because that customer journey is so important and crucial in deciding which platforms you're going to use and and where you're going to be seen yeah so Blogging can be important. Would I blog if I was a plumber? <laughs> probably not. Yeah, probably <laughs> you probably not. do yeah. not need to yeah. because that's not where people are going to be calling you. So it's, you say it depends on the industry or the business. It depends on the industry, the business and your customers and what they're likely to do. Yeah. Um, video, for example, is a great example. There's different types of video um, providers out there. There's video providers that do business stuff and some that do weddings and like it's a very it's very different niches. So, you know, it would be a different advertising approach for weddings as opposed to businesses. For weddings, you might advertise on Instagram um, or Pinterest or something a little more aesthetic. And for businesses, you probably would do more things on on, you know, LinkedIn or Facebook or a combination. Mm. That's yeah. uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So the next one is that um, what is we're well, talking about the why is social media super mom? Well, what is your motivation on building this brand? Okay, great, great question. So um, obviously, as we learned, I didn't kind of grow up in like the whole social media digital marketing era. I sort of turned back to that. Uh, so I was working as a personal trainer. I built my own studio. I had at one point five or six staff working for me and this was all in the process of while I had my two babies so I had a little uh, a little boy so and then I had a little girl so it was pretty busy busy times working in the gym getting clients in working a lot with social media and digital marketing to get clients in the door getting my bookings and trying to automate everything so that I really didn't have to do a lot of work I was very, very ill with my second pregnancy and with my daughter, I had an iron deficiency and I could barely get off the couch, which is horrific when you're trying to look after a toddler as well. And um, I managed to grow my business really successfully, even so. I realized I had to leverage staff and leverage my time better in order to do that. So fast forward to when my daughter was born and I delivered her in the hospital and the next day I was sitting in my hospital bed holding her and I was like, I better check how things are going with the business and I opened my um, phone and checked the bank account and it was the first day that I'd had $10,000 hit the bank account and I just went, wow, wasn't actually about the money for me to be to be honest like it's always nice to have money to do things but it's about the freedom that that gave me because at that moment I had this big realization that imagine if I could give that ten thousand dollar day to every mother out there nursing their young child like what an amazing feeling that was for me and that really changed the whole course and direction of my life and what I wanted to do because I thought this is what I'm kind of destined to do now is to teach other people and teach mums how to actually do this. So obviously I don't just work with mums, but, um, you know, some of my friends have said, oh, you're the social media super mum, you know, in order to have done that. And that was just a wonderful feeling. So, yeah, that's how the business came about. Um, and that's how I started, like, getting into it. Um, and from there I went and studied marketing started working for marketing agencies and that's when I realized that I actually knew a lot more about this than I thought I previously had especially with the background with the MBA in marketing too so so your yeah. so mission on your social media super mom is to teach mom well to, my mission to dream, is to teach to entrepreneurs but specifically women entrepreneurs 
how to achieve success and how to get to their first $10,000 day the way I did, yeah? Um, and how to do that while managing a family because that's a whole other kettle of fish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, as a young person, I didn't have any commitments or responsibilities. I was solely responsible for myself. And um, once I had babies and a husband and babies and a household to look after, everything changed. <laughs> I didn't have the level of time I had before. So just having that ability to leverage off, um, off being able to make that money you know, I remember there were times my husband and I would sit in the lounge room and we had the gym. This was before we had the commercial premises and we'd hear this sound of the treadmill going around and around and around. <laughs> and I used to nudge my husband and say, hey, honey, that's the sound of cash right there. Because as long as someone was on the treadmill, I knew our business was making money. Now, the great thing was I wasn't in there doing all the training. I couldn't have. We had so many clients. We had so much going on. But I was able to manage my staff to achieve great results and to get the results that we needed the clients to get. Yeah, so I'm all about empowering uh, entrepreneurs, but especially mums, how to do this because, and, and especially women, because I think um, women have a particular mindset about caring for their family, and it's really hard to switch off from that and then be an entrepreneur. And the rea- reality is, I am both. I am a mum, and I am an entrepreneur as well. Like as we're recording this, I've got my kid being looked after by a babysitter, <laughs> and another one's down mm. the beach doing something with his grandparents. And like, so yeah, life moves on, and we are busy. So it's really about setting up yourself or your family or your business um, to achieve passive income. So income that's coming in, irrespective of whether you're in the business doing the thing you do. You know, if you're a consultant you kind of tied to that nine to five, right? Uh, whereas if you can get that passive income coming in because you've built a system and a program and something that people pay for and they're not just paying for you to be there 24-7, then that's when we really reach power. Yeah, and that's something I'm really quite obsessed with. You'll hear me talk about this all the time and obsessed with teaching my own children how to do it as well Um, because I don't want my kids buying into a nine-to-five model. I want them to be able to make money, whether they're sick, well, um, you know, overseas, (laughs) at home. Yeah, the reality is with my business model, I can pick my laptop up today, tomorrow, go overseas, do do what I want to do, which is a real blessing for our family. So, yeah. That's that's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) That's a lot of uh, information. It's a good tip. So what is your advice for mom listening and watching right now Mm -hmm. if they want to start a business because then they don't know where to start because they have kids as well just like you yeah what is your advice to them well i would have two or three pieces of advice but my first piece of advice would be this i would tell them to work in their flame not in their wax so too often we're doing the stuff that we don't love doing And I think we need to all be doing what our heart desires to do. I truly believe that. And I believe we're all called to a purpose in life that's much deeper, but that we do all have this inspired purpose, this reason why we're alive. Now, I know there's probably mums or dads or people out there listening to this going, yes, yes, I know that's my purpose, but I'm just too afraid to jump off the cliff because I don't have the parachute on yet. Mm -hmm. The reality is most of what you will learn, you'll learn through failures anyway. Yeah. So what you have to do is jump and then on the way down, go, ouch, 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 ouch. (laughs) (laughs) as you hit the rocks as opposed to going okay the perfect parachute's on and it's all belted up properly and everything's good and it's all great now and then jumping which is what I think most people do so I would say absolutely like you deserve to have your life you deserve to have the calling that you've had put in your heart and so you really need to go and bust out the second thing I would say to a mother or father listening to this podcast would be how can you sit there and tell your children like that they can follow your dream, their dreams if mm-hmm. you are not willing to follow yours. And that is something that I realized is I wasn't living my best life and I was telling my kids, hey, do whatever you want and like you can achieve anything. But then I wasn't actually following my goals and doing the thing that I wanted to do. And that's why I decided to leave the personal training space and to step into what I really wanted to do, which was to teach um, business people. 
about this. So yeah, you don't get to sit there and be a hypocrite (laughs) and tell your kids this and that if you're not willing to take that space. And it's not going to be an easy ride. No, but it's definitely going to be worth it because it's like that saying of, if you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life. Like I truly am so lucky because that is how I feel. Yeah. And some days are hard. I'm not going to lie. And some days are easy, but it doesn't feel like work because this is the thing that I feel like I was born to do and that I know I'm making a difference with. So I think that's the first really important thing. The second thing I'd say to them is be organized and get systems in place straight away that save you time, right? Sometimes that's going to mean hiring a housekeeper. Sometimes that's going to mean setting up an automatically automatic booking calendar link so that people can just book in. Sometimes it's going to look different for everyone. So yeah, but trying to figure out what are the things you actually need to do and what are the things that you really need to get rid of, yeah? Um, you are going to have to make sacrifices. Like there was a period of time there that I did not watch TV for a very long time. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and just get yourself into good routines and good habits that are going to support you, not just for now or next month, but for the next few years as you build your business. Yeah? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the advice. No worries. Is there any, by the way, if if you have any question or you, you want to see her says you have a website so yeah this is a social media super mom (laughs) (laughs) no worries my website is www.socialmediasupermom.com in um true style of what we've talked about today Mm. that is a landing page where you'll be able to download my 30-day online business planner so if you're even just thinking oh maybe that's something i'd like to do that will give you an option to go download it it's full of i think there's about like 40 pages worth of different things and i've had great feedback on it things like how to message your audience and what's your target market segment and going through all the different elements of your online business and how to plan it out so yeah you can find that there so socialmediasupermum.com and yeah and if you've got any other questions then you can definitely email me once i send that out to you all right so for our audience and our listeners i'm gonna put some description on the podcast where to contact super mom (laughs) (laughs) thanks and um, thank you so thank you so much for listening and watching See you next week. Great. Thank you. you. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted in Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or via RSS. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And if you want to know more, check out kangaroofern.com.